I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. Alright, what is up guys? Welcome back to Reject Films. Uh, I'm not sure when this video is going to be posted, so just ha Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, all that good stuff to you guys. Hope everybody is doing well and had a great holiday season with your families and all that. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of get this video out here. <clears throat> I've been working with uh, Warner Archive for a while now. And I uh, just wanted to do a collection overview of the Warner Archive titles. Uh, so this is my Warner Archive collection. Collection. Um, wasn't sure how to describe it in the uh, title there on YouTube because collection, collection sounded kind of stupid. But so uh, yeah, uh, I guess you'll see what I end up going with. But um, yeah, really uh, great company. Um, you know, offspring of Warner Brothers and do a lot of the uh, more classic films and everything and films that didn't have a Blu-ray release up to now and. Uh, things like that. Always great transfers. Usually kind of lacking on special features, but uh, like I said, the transfers are always really good and, uh, you know, audio video quality wise. And I do have uh, reviews for all but one of these up, which I'll probably do a review for because uh, only one of these I actually bought myself and the rest, like I say, were sent to me for review. Uh, so thank you to Matt over at Warner Archive for uh, working with me. It's been uh, a great pleasure and uh, I appreciate it very much. And, um, just a really great, cool guy. Um, so let's jump right into it. I'll leave a link, uh, one of these sides, can't remember which one, uh, probably just to the playlist for reviews. All these are in my reviews playlist. Um, some of them are too old to leave an actual, uh, you know, card for, but, uh, yeah, let's uh, jump right into it here. This is one of their newer ones here that a lot of people were anticipating, and that is Bad Ronald, the uh, made-for-TV movie, uh, originally released in 1974, and yeah, really enjoyed this one quite a bit. Say, so I'm not going to talk about these too much just because, um, you know, I do have full reviews for these, so we'll show the facts and the interiors and everything. <clears throat> which at least they put pictures on their disc and uh, I don't believe there's any uh, there's no features on this but uh yeah bad Ronald really good movie I, I I dug it quite a bit and then this is another newer one here um, big Wednesday you got a uh, William Cat and Gary Busey in here and uh, Jan John Jan Michael Vincent however you say his name uh, this one was really good as well. Uh, a lot of these were first time watches. I think all these actually were first time watches. But uh, yeah, really good story. I really liked uh, all the characters and everything. You actually you know, gave, gave a shit about the characters and everything. So um, I don't think there was any on here as well. Uh, yeah, you have a feature length audio commentary by director and co-writer John Milas. A retrospective documentary capturing the swell and a theatrical trailer. So yeah, there's a few features on here. And show the inside here. Uh, yeah. Big Wednesday. And this was originally released in 1978. And next up, this is one I was really wanting to check out. I love these types of movies. That is The Colossus of Rhodes. A truly colossal motion picture. And there is a commentary by film historian Christopher Frayling. And this was originally released in 1961. Um, this one took a while to really get going, but I, I love the uh, the last act. is is really cool. Definitely uh, worth checking out if you guys are fans of this type of movie with the uh, you know, the old uh, Roman type stuff, gladiators and things like that. Um, yeah. And then another newer title, uh, Colossus of Rose was a newer title too. This was a pretty recent release as well. It is Dracula AD 1972. 
And this one stars uh, Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing and a few other um, recognizable faces. This was uh, originally released in 1972. And yeah, no features on here whatsoever, but um, here's the disc art. It's pretty much the same as the front. Pretty, pretty decent movie. This is a Hammer Horror film as well. They just recently started uh, releasing those. And then one I, I had seen before. <clears throat> this one actually wasn't a first time watch. I think this might be the only one. That is The Hidden. I know this was another one of their more anticipated titles as well. I still have the old Snapper Case DVD of it. And I, it was one of those movies I felt like I was the only one that had ever seen, seen it until I got on here and I joined a bunch of Facebook groups and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, found out I wasn't. So this is uh, originally released in 1987. This one does have a few fe uh, features on here. We have a commentary by director Jack Shoulder and Tim Hunter. Special effects production footage narrated by Jack Shoulder and original theatrical trailer. I know it is glaring, but uh. Yeah, the inside's a little different on here. Yeah, this is one I always always liked quite a bit. And uh, it was good to see, finally get a uh, Blu-ray release. And then we have one I was pretty excited for. And kind of kind of let me down a little bit. It's kind of not what I expected. But uh, that is The Hunger. With David Bowie, Susan Sarandon, and Catherine... De Nove. I think I screwed it up in the review for it too. Um, and this has a couple features on here. Actually, just one. It has a commentary by Susan Sarandon and director Tony Scott, which, of course, brother of Ridley Scott. And nothing human loves forever. The uh, tagline. It's a really weird, weird movie. I know a lot of people really like it, but I don't know. <clears throat> it was it was just strange. And this one came out in 1983, The Hunger. Try to run through these pretty quick. And this is one I really liked quite a bit. And I didn't really know what it was about. I always seen this cover and uh, it looked intriguing. And I'm really glad I watched it because this is one of my favorites from uh, the stack. And that is Innocent Blood. Uh, if you guys haven't checked this one, I'll definitely do so. This has, uh, looks like no features at all. And this is directed by John Landis as well from American Wolf in London and uh, other notable films. But, uh, yeah, I really dug this one quite a bit. This is, came out in 1992 originally. And there's the artwork. I kind of wish they'd do you know, slip covers or reversible art or something. But uh, like I say, I mean, their transfer quality is up there with Arrow, um, Vinegar Syndrome, stuff like that. Their transfer quality is really great. <clears throat> and this is the only one I did actually purchase myself and still haven't uh, watched. I've seen it a long time ago. I don't really remember much about it, but uh, I remember liking it quite a bit. And uh, this was my first purchase, and then I started working with them. And that is Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw 3. And I know this is one of the more hated ones, along with Part 2. Uh, not Part 2, but... Uh, uh, yeah, Next Generation, which I do want to grab that, too. I always kind of like that one, too. And uh, this one does have a few features on here. The Saul's Family, making of Leatherface documentary. Uh, we know how... We know what to do with them, parts, deleted scenes, uh, alternate ending, ending, and theatrical trailers. Ending. Uh, yeah. I say I'll, I'll probably throw up a review for this anyways, just because I've done one for all these other ones, and it's one I haven't seen in a really long time, and it's kind of one of those uh, love-it-hate-it movies. And then another one that, <laughs> really surprised me too. I actually really like this one quite a bit too. Another newer release from them. That is Looker. With Albert Finney and James Coburn. And oh, Leatherface 
was released in 1990. I kind of get a routine going and then just... But uh, yeah, this is one I was really looking forward to. I always watch the trailers. I kind of skim through what they have in their catalog and watch the trailers unless it's something like new that looks interesting. Then I'll just grab it anyways. But I really kind of try to research and uh, I'm not real big on their... I mean, nothing against them themselves, but I'm not real big on movies like uh, the old, uh, uh, like Lucille Ball type stuff, the old, especially like black and white stuff, I'm not like huge on, but uh, <clears throat> I do, I have seen a few black and white movies and I do own a few, but, uh, and I might get into stuff like, like film noir type stuff, um, I don't know. I might, I might branch out eventually and get into that kind of stuff. But uh, as you can tell, most of these are, you know, action horror-esque uh, type stuff. But uh, yeah, Looker is, is pretty cool. Pretty cool little movie. And uh, you do see her in the nude there at the, I believe it's at the beginning. Um, and it's only rated PG. <laughs> and there's nudity. It's like... You know, these radiants from back then are ridiculous. Uh, this is from 1981. Um, it, it was just crazy what they get away with on a, you know, PG-13, or PG movie or something. But uh, it's definitely an R-rated movie, for sure. Uh, check this one out, though. It's really cool, kind of sci-fi, um, action, drama. <clears throat> and then another one I really liked quite a bit, and uh, this is more horror esque than a lot of them and that is a uh, night school um, takes a little bit to get going but uh, never really bored with it per se and uh, really r really like the killer in here I'm trying not to use the word Doug a lot because I don't really even like that word I don't know why I'm saying it but uh, yeah a lesson in terror the disc I say I really I really like the style of the killer in here and the it's not like real gory or anything like that but it's stylish kills I guess and uh, another one of those movies where you actually cared about the characters and everything so I don't believe I don't think there was any on here either oh there was uh, features on looker it was introduction and commentary by Michael uh, Crichton uh, deleted scene as used in the network television version, which I recommend checking that out because it actually um, adds to the story a lot. And you're like, oh, okay, now I see what happened. Uh, so definitely check out that deleted scene. I don't know why they took it out um, of this release, but I think it really helped the movie. Uh, yeah, where was I? Uh, features on here, there is none. This came out in 1980. This is one of those ones that, you know, 8081 was, there were so many horror flicks that this one just kind of fell under the radar, you know, and I think I already, yeah, I already showed the disc, but yeah, Night School, definitely check it out. I mean, if you guys are horror fans um, and you like good suspense and story and you care about the characters and it's not just something you've seen a million times, definitely give it a watch. And then we have one, <clears throat> I saw this a long time ago, like when I was a kid or something. Uh, I remember very little about it, but I've uh, always been a fan of Dolph Lundgren. And I got Brandon Lee in here too, of course, uh, Bruce Lee's son. Um, Showdown in Little Tokyo. Awesome, awesome movie. I can't recommend this enough. Uh, really enjoyed this one quite a bit. And features on here. I was wanting to say there was, but I guess not. Huh. This came out in 1991. Here's the disc. A lot, a lot of you guys have heard of this one. Uh, which is kind of surprising to have a, a Blu-ray release already. But yeah, I definitely recommend checking this one out. This one here is probably my least favorite of, of the bunch. Um, yeah. Uh, I was trying to branch off a little bit and get into something that wasn't really my realm of uh, movie, and it didn't work out too well for me. But not not a, not a terrible movie by any means. I know a lot of people really like this one, and that's fine. 
but to each their own. That is super fly. I said not not terrible, just wasn't really my my cup of tea, I guess. And this is another <coughs> newer release from them. You do have some features on here though. You have a last one last deal, a retrospective documentary commentary by Dr. Todd Boyd, USC professor of cinema and television and author of Am I Black Enough for You? Popular Culture from the Hood and Beyond. Curtis Mayfield on Superfly. Behind the Hog with Les Dunham. Ryan O'Neill on the making of Superfly. Costume designer Nate Adams goes behind the threads. Quite a few features on here. Um, I can't how many times I say um in this video. Kind of getting on my own nerves with that. But uh, this came out in 1972 and like I say, it just, I don't know, wasn't really, wasn't really for me, but, and then one I actually really liked, it, it kind of, kind of drags here and there, and a lot of people don't like this movie, and just think it's terrible, but I really liked it, I thought Michael Caine did great in this movie, and it's one he kind of disowns, but I enjoyed this movie for what it was. And that is The Swarm. Again, another newer title from them. And there is the interior art. If you don't like bees, you're afraid of bees or something, then definitely don't watch it. But uh, I really liked it. So you have a behind the scenes documentary inside The Swarm and theatrical trailer. This is from 1978. Yeah. I recommend checking it out, but. This is me. And then another newer title. I think that a lot of people were excited for this one too. And again, one of the few black and white films I own. And I liked it quite a bit. I thought it was pretty good. I, I, I'd only seen the original, uh, I mean the remake. So this is my first time actually watching the original. I think I'd probably watch bits and pieces on TV or something. But that is Village of the Damned. Beware the stare. This came out in 1960. And you have a commentary by Chronicles of Terror, Silent Screams, Arthur Steve Haberman. Which I'm not big on commentaries. If it's a movie I really, really like, like I've watched the commentary on Devil's Rejects and stuff like that, but, uh, and, uh, Texas Chainsaw 2, which is my favorite chainsaw, and everything, but. You know, for the most part, I don't really care about the commentaries too much. I just want to watch the movie. And I'll, I'll usually watch like a, you know, like a making of featurette or something. But, yeah, Village of the Damned. Great transfer on here as well. Uh, I recommend checking this one out for sure. I think I, nope. And there's the discard. It'd be cool if they had like, you know, newly, newly commissioned art on the other side, but... Then they'd have to pay more money to have somebody do that and then in turn charge us more money. Which, speaking of which, um, speaking of money, uh, if you guys are interested in picking any of these up, keep in mind they do have the 4 for 44 sell, you know, a few times a year. So uh, if any of these look interesting, definitely jump on there and, you know, set up an account, add them to the cart and all that. And when that sale hits, just, you know. Uh, this is one I was really looking forward to and I was kind of let down a little bit. Uh, still a decent movie overall. Uh, cases are got, like weird stuff on them from being in a box. I was moving stuff around, as you can see in the background. But um, Woofin. Another kind of strange movie, but wasn't terrible. Wasn't great. Uh, I say a lot of people really like it. I think a lot of these movies you just you got to grow up with. You got to watch them when you're younger and have that fondness for them. And like I say, a lot of these, except for a couple, were first time watches for me. So watching them now for the first time, like with any other older film from the 70s, 80s, stuff like that, you're just like, you know, you don't, you don't understand some of the references or you don't understand some of the slang or you don't, you know, you just, you didn't know what was going on in that time, you know, especially stuff in like the 70s and early 80s for me. It's like, I don't know what was going on then. I wasn't alive, you know? I mean, I was born in the early 80s, but <laughs> not old enough to remember anything. So, 
Yeah, this is Wolfen. Came out in 1981. Again, you know, 81, just so many movies came out, especially in this horror genre. So, there's the inside artwork. And, yeah, no features on here. Here's the pack. Yeah, that is it, guys. That is my Warner Archive collection collection. Um, let me know if you guys have seen any of these movies and what you guys think of them. And I will be, you know, continuing to add to the collection. So just to recap, Bad Ronald, Big Wednesday, Colossus of Rhodes, Dracula, 1972, AD, sorry. The Hidden, The Hunger, Innocent Blood, Leatherface, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, Looker, and that Leatherface, that's the only one I normally don't, um, Night School, keep with uh, uh, Showdown Little Tokyo, to Tokyo, Tokyo, I don't know. Uh, Superfly, but that's the only one I don't really keep with the other archive titles. Uh, the rest of them I keep together, but that one I keep with my other chainsaws. Uh, I might change that, I don't know. Uh, the Swarm, I like to keep a lot of the studios together, a lot of the uh, more boutique labels. Uh, Village of the Damned, and Woofin. So, as that, I think there were, what, 15 titles, something like that? So thanks again, Warner Archive. Uh, it's been an honor, a pleasure working with you guys. And definitely look forward to seeing what you guys come out with next. I know um, ah, Judgment Night is coming out with uh, Amelia Estevez and some uh, a couple other titles. I can't remember. But uh, yeah, as long as they keep sending me stuff to review for you guys, I'll keep you know pushing those videos out and... Uh, you guys seem to be enjoying the archive title and, uh, reviews, and I know, like I say, a lot of times they're first time on Blu-ray, so you guys want to see, you know, my thoughts, and I try to give uh, a little bit of thoughts on the audio quality and video quality and everything. I don't go into, like, specific details on it, like frame rates and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And, you know, I just say, you know, whether it's good or not, if there's grain, if there's, you know, stuff like that, but I don't, I don't get into the technical side a whole lot but <clears throat> uh yeah so i hope you guys enjoy this video again merry christmas happy new year all that stuff uh i mean this video will be up after christmas but um yeah spend time with your families guys uh always uh show the ones that you care about that you care about them and uh yeah Thank you for sticking sticking with me through uh, a lot of tough times and everything. Uh, those of you who have uh, continued to, you know, show your support. Get a little emotional at the end there. Later. <laughs>